So in all honesty, (laughs) I got to tell you how I came to do this review because I am not a movie reviewer. I don't aspire to be a movie reviewer. My podcast is not even about movies. Okay. This was born out of my own frustration, by the way, not just mine, but the frustration of my man. So before we go any further, spoilers all, all over the place, let me tell you how this came to be. So last night, Friday night, my man and I go see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We are huge, huge fans of this series since we were both little. Heck, sci-fi is both of our favorite movie genres, okay? So what we had decided to do months ago when the promos for Kingdom first came out, we decided we were not going to prepare for the movie. Meaning we weren't going to go online and read anything. We weren't going to watch anything. We were going to walk into that theater and we were going to have the most purest of pure experiences for lovers of this series. Okay. Mind you, these are all new apes to us and to you too. All right. We know nothing about them. So we go, we know the movie is over two hours. Okay. I can no longer sneak in, sneak in snacks in my purse for us because our movie theater a few years ago instituted a small purse policy, a <laughs> small bag policy, right? And they have the right to open it up at any moment, okay? So, you know, you go through the line, you do all those things. After the movie is over, we walk out and we embark on this discussion that what the heck was that? Listen, I'm aware that the movie has grossed over 50 plus million in its opening weekend. I'm going to tell you about that too in just a second. But let me finish. So we get in the car and we start talking about What the heck was that? These new people who took over this series, this ball person, okay, what the heck did they do? So babe says, he says, you know, it can't just be us. So get on the internet, see what some of these people are saying. So we watched or listened to as we were driving three reviews and they were all lying to you and yes to us. You want to know why? Everybody that you've listened to or watched do a, a review of this movie are either paid movie reviewers, some of them professional movie reviewers, right? And then the ones who aren't paid, they aspire to be, right? That's why their entire YouTube channel is about movie reviews, okay? Is because they hope to catch the attention of one of these places, 21st Century, Walt Disney, blah, 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 blah. But not me. I have no aspirations whatsoever and nobody is paying me to say what I'm going to say. So guess what? That completely frees me up to tell you the truth. And that is what you're going to get in this movie review. Welcome back. This is the MVMO podcast. Yes, you can tell it's audio only. There are no videos. There aren't any pictures. So what you can do is minimize me on your device. Keep checking your email, scrolling, order off something off Amazon. Do what you got to do or just place your device down, right? And just have me going in the house as you multitask. So first, I'm going to run down the top three disappointments, okay? And then I'll end with the top three great things. Overall, I'm giving this movie a five, okay? I don't even know if folks still rate movies like that. That's just how archaic, okay, I am when it comes to this stuff. But let me just explain to you what the deal was. As I said, these were all new apes to us. We don't know their story, right? Right? (laughs) So what does that mean? It's It's of utmost importance that the characters are developed fully. One of the things uh, Babe said last night, he said, I I never really realized just how well the characters were developed in Rise, Dawn and War until this. For instance, we get a new villain, Proximus Caesar. He is our new antagonist in this series. And we are left with a plethora of questions about him. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because this ball person or whoever these people were who who spent like 2.5 seconds on writing this script, they don't tell us anything. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. (laughs) I'm getting way too excited here. Okay. So let's just start with our last villain, Koba. Okay. Listen, we got to see Koba's story. They developed, their script writers developed his, his story perfectly his character excuse me perfectly we knew why he hated humans we knew why he wanted revenge on the humans we saw the friction between he and caesar develop and we knew the source of that we knew all those things none of us had any questions about coba so now we have as i said a brand new antagonist a brand new villain and guess what 
We are not told why Proxima Caesar has such an insatiable desire to get his hands on the technology of the humans. We do not know why or how he came to be over the apes he was over. How was it that these apes began to laud him as their king? Who was he? What was his origin story? Is he of the lineage of Caesar, or the lineage of Koba or neither? Was he just some, some random ape that rose to power? If that's the case, how did that happen? Very little about Proxima Caesar. And if you're like me and my man, and as a sci-fi fan, you are really into the character story. You will be, you will walk away woefully d- uh, disappointed. Okay. Again, I'm just focusing on the lack of character development in the script right now. Listen, Noah's character was developed very well. However, May, how many of you still have questions about May? I mean, we were just talking like, what did they, how long did they spend on this script? I mean, wh- who were the script writers here? Who were the writers, the screenwriters here? Because there was so much left that was just unanswered. And check this out for a movie that was over two hours long. That shouldn't be, that should not be. Most of the movie was the hero's journey of Noah. Okay. However, however, to over two hours, close to two and a half hours, guys, that's a long time for any movie. Let's just be real about it, especially in this day and time when we have streaming, we have all these things. Our attention spans are short, you know, you know, as a fly. OK, but the bottom line is you walk away with more questions about these characters. And again, in a movie that's over two hours long, you shouldn't have any questions about the main characters. And Proxima Caesar was supposed to be he is the villain, he is the main antagonist in this story. Another thing about this movie that was a huge letdown was how much screen time they actually gave to the character of Proxima Caesar. Listen, one of the things Babe said last night, he said, you know what? We were in there for over two hours and now we did not time this. So this is just us talking together. We guesstimated that maybe in over two and a half hours or close to two and a half hours, Maybe 20 minutes of that was Proxima Caesar, which was again, a huge letdown. If you were interested in who is this new villain, who is he? Why, why, (laughs) you know, why do they laud him? What did he do to prove himself to the apes that he could, he could be their king? You get what I'm saying? It's almost like these writers, they just dropped it in the middle of this. And we're like, wait a minute, where are we? Who are we? What are they doing? Right? So it was a huge letdown because a lot of us, you know, we love to hate the villain of any story, right? And so to only see him on screen, the character on screen, the barest of the barest was hugely disappointing. The ape, the gorilla, who was tasked with rounding up the humans, we see that character gets more screen time. By the way, who was he? What was his name? Okay, yeah, see all that kind of stuff. We didn't get that either. Why was, why was most of the movie you would think that he was the main antagonist. Okay. So now I want to move to the second thing that was hugely disappointing. If you are not a man or woman of color, you will not understand this. Okay. And I can promise you, you didn't notice it. Now, mind you, this movie is supposed to be set. This is what's supposed to be happening or what happened generations after Caesar. And when I tell you, Babe and I sat there and we said, where are the black folks? Where are the Hispanic people? (laughs) Where are the Asian people? Where are the people of color in this movie? We counted, this is of course not during the movie, but when we were in the car, we we counted up that we saw four black people (laughs) and one we weren't quite sure, but one we were positive about. And I think if you're a person of color, you know what I mean by that. If you don't, don't worry about it. Okay. But it's like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me this is supposed to be the future and the future is Lily White? I don't think so. People of color are the global majority. (laughs) And we will, all of us, definitely be the global majority in the future. But this really tells you what was in the mind of of the casting director or directors or whomever, the script writers, even the people doing the voices. There were no people of color behind the scenes on this movie. And... The main characters, you know, uh, the human characters, I mean, none of color. I mean, it's like, where are the Asian people? Okay. Where are the Japanese? Like, what's going on here? 
<laughs> I mean, this movie was basically Lily White and that was a huge letdown and disappointment because again, it tells you what was in the heart of the people who created this, this new iteration of Planet of the Apes. Okay. You know, it's such a shame because this is, this is like a glaring example of why we cannot stop, stop the fight for diversity, equity, and inclusion in all parts of society, but in particular, these movies. You have a movie of this caliber in a series of this caliber. And in Rise, Dawn, and War, you see people of color everywhere, of all types, people of color. But this is the first iteration of this recent incarnation of this, where you're like, what the heck were they thinking? You didn't have a consultant in the script room. You didn't have anyone who could have pointed this out to you. Again, we're not even just talking about people on the screen, but the people behind the camera. It's just crazy. The third thing that was hugely disappointing for us, again, was the storyline itself. It was so ho-hum. It was so typical. It was so predictable. Let me tell you, Noah and his family are happy. Bad people come and burn down their village and kill his daddy. He gets angry. He buries his daddy and he vows revenge on his enemies. He goes and hunts down his enemies. He meets a few friends along the way. And then he winds up killing the killer. I mean, it's like, really? Now, listen, we all understand the hero's journey is the hero's journey, no matter who the character is. But that does not mean, y'all, that there's not room for creativity in the storyline. I mean, there were no twists and turns there. It was like so predictable. It showed, a, I'm telling you, these people spent more time on the computer generated images and voices, etc., whereas they should have spent more time developing the storyline itself and developing, spending time in this script, developing the, the character stories and narratives. Okay. So those are the big disappointments. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this whole thing was terrible. Okay. Again, I told you I'm giving it a five out of 10. The things that were great is this, this movie was one where there was constant, um, I don't know what they call it because I'm not a professional reviewer. Uh, I don't know the lingo. I'm just going to say movement. There was a lot of action. So there was never a point during this movie where I turned to babe or he turned to me and said, okay, what time does your cell phone say? I mean, how much longer we got here? Okay. Uh, so it was nothing like that. So that was really good. The second thing that was really great, the computer generated images of these apes was tip, 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 top. I mean, 10 over 10 on that, every little hair, every nostril, every inhale, any, every exhale. I mean, they did a fantastic job. I mean, if we were all crazy, we would have just assumed that these were real animals talking. That's just how great the imagery was. But again, if you're the kind of sci-fi fan, in particular a fan of the series, who's more into the imagery and the movement and the action, but less into the story itself and the development of the characters, you came out saying, "Woo! this was fantastic. Look at the images, look at the mouth movements, all that kind of a thing. But if you're really into the depths of these stories, you were like, okay, you played me. Y'all played us. <laughs> Y'all thought, I mean, we thought with these new group of apes, we were going to get this fantastic storyline and we just didn't y'all. The last thing I will tell you that was um, really good here. Uh, let me see. Actually, that was it. <laughs> there ain't nothing else. So there was two good things. So let me explain this. Okay. So we know even when we went to the theater last night, it was packed full, even though it came out way before Friday, it came out a few days before Friday. I mean, it was, we were all in there packed like sardines. Okay. So I'm not surprised that in the opening weekend, this movie brought in 50 plus million, but that's not the same as what people thought about the movie. Of course, there were tons and tons and tons and tons of us. Okay. Here in the States who were fans of this series, you know, our mothers and fathers are fans of this series, your kids, you may have brought them. So it's like, of course, we were going to pack this thing out because we had these high expectations. The last we got was kingdom where Caesar was killed. We know in the original thing, Caesar was killed, but of course there was a creativity and how this all went on. So it's like, we had such high hopes. And so we all went to the theaters in droves, but I'm telling you, if as you are looking for reviews, you better find reviews from men and women who aren't paid and who aren't looking to be paid. They're the only ones that are going to tell you the flat out truth because they're, they don't care what, you know, the ball person and whoever else, if they happen to come across it, thinks or says. So those are my thoughts about the kingdom of the planet of the apes. Let me tell you this last thing with rise, dawn and, um, 
War, Babe and I went to see those movies twice in the theater. After this one, we both walked off and we were like, who cares? We don't even want to see this one again. Guess what? I'm not even getting it for the collection. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you in the next one.